Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone Horde series video and on this video I focus firmly on the Pat Jens Lakes Horde. This is the largest horde in the Belknap region folks, so this will be a fun video. <laughs> right then, on to some information about this horde. The first thing to know folks is this horde is 100 strong. It is located in the far west of the Belknap region very close to Tucker's camp actually and this horde is available to take on right from the very start of the Days Gone game. Now here are the three areas that you will find this horde. During the daytime that is where they're located. They're basically located in the caves in that area. Now a bit further up from there you have their night water location where they go to drink and a lot further up you finally have their feeding area and there is a couple of easy kill locations from that area alone but as well as that there is three easy kill locations in total folks so this is going to be fun right now folks the first method I'm going to show is a conventional method albeit I normally have a twist of sorts because I like to do things just a little bit different and the first thing that will probably shock folks when they see this method is basically I'm not going to use any of my resources. Just this petrol can and gunplay because I have a very specific way of taking out this horde. And it's quite, a, it's quite an efficient method when you see it done from start to finish. Basically folks, I'm looking to enter the cave. I'm basically going to try and draw out the entire horde so that does require a little bit of gunplay here and try and stay in this area as long as I can which won't be that long but uh, <laughs> just enough to get all of their attention from here I'm looking to get out of the cave I'm going to hit the can and most people will be thinking I'm just going to run straight back no I am not I'm basically going to run to my right I want to get across this uh, water section here and it's the water section that's basically going to be the main part of this uh, takedown method because look at this once I'm over on this side look how slowly they are in getting over and you can pick them off so easy and so cleanly also because they are right next to a rock face you're not going to get them trying to flank you in any way shape or form and if they do they're moving so bloody slow you're not going to have any problems in basically uh, taking them out so it's just quite literally uh, taking them out before they actually get to you. I think I've only had about two that have actually made it to land so far. And there we go, folks. That is the way it's done. No resources required. And that's a pretty clean way to take out this horde, folks. Just using the environment. Right now, folks, on to the first easy kill location. And this basically takes place very near to their night feeding area. And for anybody who knows this area, this will probably not come as a surprise. Basically, I am looking to get their attention with a little bit of gunplay. Just try and take out a few of their numbers while they're uh, basically uh, congregated over there. But the whole idea is, once they start to get close, I'm heading over to the radio tower over here. The whole of the horde will come over. And basically, it's a case of, once I've climbed to the top of this bad boy... I'm just going to rain down Terra from above. And that's it folks, it is a very safe way in order to take out uh, this particular horde. And you may get a few extra freak ears as well, because it's taking place at night, chances are you are going to attract a few other freakers from around as well. So it doesn't do any harm for uh, the freak ears that you're going to uh, basically hand in at the camps for, uh, for cr camp credits. Anyhow, it does take a wee while to get to the top here. Once I'm at the top here, I like to use this corner here. And basically from here, I want to get as many of them over into that area as possible. And then I'm just going to basically use some of my resources that I have. Uh, yep, frag grenade will be very nice. That takes out 30 at a time. And uh, if you're not sure where to get some of these resources early, folks... Later on in this video, I will show three fantastic locations of where you can get a hold of a lot of these items that uh, I'm basically using right now. 
So yes, you will be able to get a hold of pipe bombs and you will be able to get a hold of grenades. Now, in my inventory, I do also have uh, napalm molotovs. I'm not using any at this point because quite simply, folks, at this stage in the game, you would not have access normally to napalm molotovs. I only use items that generally you would have access to around the time that you're uh, taking these on. So. Getting there now, I don't think there will be that many left. So basically, once I have the vast majority of the numbers taken care of, I like to just head back down and then just a nice sweep up with gunplay. You don't have to do it this way, folks. If you do have a really good uh, amount of resources and supplies, you can just keep firing um, bits and bobs from the, the top of the radio tower, but uh, you don't have to. Once the numbers are far fewer, I think it's always just best just get down to the bottom and uh, just clean up. And there we go, folks. There was only two left to take care of. That is a very good easy kill location, but the next one, folks, is better. Just watch this. Right, and folks, on to the second easy kill location, and this is again at their night feeding area. But I'm not looking to move them as I did before. This one basically centers on the very back of the Nero site there, because you can actually see, uh, well, you can't now, but you could actually see the ledge that I'm basically going to end up at, and it's basically where all the the Nero soldiers basically dump all the bodies. Hence why all the Freakers have an awful lot of food at that particular spot. Now, there are a few things you need to know if you're going to do it this way, folks. And the first one is crucial. Make sure that any of the Freakers and whatnot that are in this area, you kill before you get to this ledge area. Because if you don't, you're going to get some nasty surprises when you do get to that ledge area. I can tell you from experience, the first time I tried this, I just tried sort of sneaking past them and whatnot. And then, uh, yeah, lo and behold, once I started raining down terror on the actual horde, one or two of the freakers that were in here were alerted to the gunfire and whatnot, and I had some unexpected visitors. If you take the time to take out all of the freakers and whatnot that are in this uh, narrow site, you will not have that issue. Even if you do have the option of going past them quietly, don't. Take care of them. Make sure they're killed. And of course, with it being at night, you are going to have more than normal. I do have a suppressor on the SMP9, so it's uh, just trying to keep things quiet so I don't alert any things that I don't want to alert. <laughs> There's no point in making more work for yourself. But any things I do see, they are getting killed. And that's it, folks. I think I am now good. But, <laughs> petrol can. That will do nicely. Always good to use resources that are uh, freely available to you. And I'm certainly going to take the time to use this one because here is the location. Once you get here, folks, they will see you. And they'll just start bunching up beautifully below you. So at this point, I might as well just start off with the petrol can. That'll take care of a few. And then from here, you can take care of them any way you like. I'm going with gunplay here, but if you really just wanted to take care of them quickly, just fire down a few grenades some pipe bombs. It will not take long. You don't require attractors with this method, which is fantastic. And because you are where you are, they're just bunched up below you superbly. Um, Molotovs are always a good option here. Uh, you generally have quite a lot of them at the start of the game because the game does uh, make the resources for crafting Molotovs very readily available. Uh, mainly because you have an awful lot of infestation zones that you have to take care of. But uh, you have the option that you can use some with the hordes as well. So at this point, folks, I shouldn't have too long now to take out this entire horde. And as you can see, this is a pretty good effective method. 
However, it's worth noting that the third easy kill location I actually consider to be the best of the bunch, basically because there is so little hassle and it is so quick from start to finish. So, without any further ado, on to easy kill location number three. Right folks, easy kill location number three, the best of the bunch in my opinion. This basically takes place close to where they go for their night water area. I'm actually marking on the map where I'm actually going to take them to. And this folks is a fantastic method to take out this horde. Because the setup is very easy, all I'm going to do is basically drive by them, fire off a few shots, so I'll take care of one or two of them at this point, and all I'm looking to do is to get their attention. And from here, it's a nice easy job, you even have a nice road to basically lead them down. And basically folks, this set of rocks that I'm coming up to, I'm basically looking to get the bike on top of it. And once I'm on top here, simple dismount, and then from here, it's demolition time. How easy is that folks? That is the setup done and complete. I can now basically take them out in any which way I choose. And I'm just going to use the SMP9 just for quickness here. But uh, if you like, as always, you can take them out with one of your less effective weapons like the SAF-12 if you want to save on ammunition for the SMP9. Because obviously the SMP9 is uh, a very handy weapon for when you're on the bike as well. And that is that horde done and dusted, folks, with the best method of the lot in my opinion. Now, before I go on to show the last of the runs, I do want to show three fantastic locations where you can get your hands on some really good resources, should you require them. Right then folks, here is the first location for getting your hands on some really good items very early game. And the first location is basically the power station in the Cascade region. And it's basically located here on the map and where the triangle is right now, that is basically the area that you need to get to. Basically, you need to start climbing up all these uh, stair areas until you eventually get to this point right here. And then it is up this uh, rather large set of ladders here. But once you get to the top, this is where all the items are. And there's quite a few in this uh, one area alone, folks. So start off with... A proximity mine. Fantastic to have early game. As well as this, you also get one flashbang and one frag grenade. I'm full up on uh, medkits at this point, but there is a medkit there. There is also a melee weapon, a sledgehammer. And then you have a pipe bomb and an attractor bomb. All in all, just for that one location, a fantastic haul to get, folks. Right then folks, location 2 is actually located in the Belknap region. Albeit in the northern area, it's actually in the town of Marion Forks and the first house is right here on the map folks. Now once you get here, there is a very specific way of getting onto uh, the roof section and into the particular uh, room that all these items are in and it's right here folks. As soon as you go in, just look at this lot. One proximity bomb, one attractor bomb, and one proximity mine. As well as that, there's a hatchet there as well. You've also got ammunition. Yeah, that's nice. Right, folks, on to location three. And this location is also located in the Marion Forks town in the Belknap region. Truth be told, it's not very far away from location two, folks. And... Very similar to location 2, you require a very specific route in order to access the two window areas that you need to get in to access the particular rooms that have all these items. And this is the first one right here, folks. Once you're in here, there is a rag there as well as some ammunition, but there is also a fantastic sniper rifle that you can get very early. And if you just go through into the next room, you have a med kit and a tractor and a frag grenade, but that's not all folks, there is also a flashbang on the bed there. Once you have all those items, just exit the window here and then you're looking to go in through the next one here. And from here folks, there is also someone you can loot as well as a melee weapon, 
but the pipe bomb in the toilet there, very important, and then there is another couple items here, a Molotov, and also a med kit. Very nice. Right then, I always like to show a stealth option after I've shown where you can get your hands on some resources. And I don't normally recommend you taking out uh, a horde with stealth during the night time because of uh, potentially having other freakers to worry about that are roaming the area, but this spot by their uh, feeding grounds is not a bad location at all. You generally don't tend to find that there is too many freakers in this area other than the horde. So I'm basically going to start with an tractor. Then I'm going to go with a grenade. This will take out 30 of the numbers straight away. And then I'm actually going to go with another couple of grenades after this and try and take out uh, a good few more of them. Unfortunately, they don't seem to be grouping up quite as well as what I would like. They normally really bunch in big style when uh, a grenade goes off. So I fired over three grenades and actually hasn't done a particularly good job. So I'm going with an attractor bomb here which will take out 20, and I'm going to go very quickly with a normal Molotov straight afterwards. This should get most of the horde taken care of. Now, given the method that I showed before, you'll probably never feel the need to take out the horde this way, but if you do want to go with a stealth option, this isn't the world's worst way of going about it. Now, at this point, I'm just breaking cover because there's hardly any of them left. And I have an SMP9 handy, so. And there we go, folks. That is a stealth option, should you wish to use it. Personally, the easy kill location too is the far better option. Right then, folks. The last method I am going to show is the quick and easy method. And this really is a beauty, folks. This basically entails the petrol can that's over there but it will not really be required too much. It's going to be more just to slow down the last of the Freakers. But as well as this, I'm going to be using one attractor, two grenades, and one attractor bomb. That's it. And honestly, folks, when you see how this goes down, this is a nice way to take out this horde. This does not take long at all. So I want the attractor in that specific spot. It's a nice area where they're going to group nicely, and not only that, after the first grenade's gone down and it's gone off, I want the second grenade going down there quickly. That will take out another 30, so you've basically got 60 of them taken out already. The attractor bomb is down, but I'm going to use the SMP9 as well here, just to lower the numbers. And once the attractor bomb's gone off, I'm just waiting for the last of the freakers here, and there isn't going to be many. It's a nice cleanup job. And there we go, folks. And that is the Patchens Lakes Horde well and truly taken care of, folks. And that's the end of the video also. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed the video.